coming up on this week's Dirt Shed Show, we're talking about Red Bull Rampage and some of the cool custom pro bikes over there. Yeah, all the regular stuff as well on the Dirt Shed Show, plus Sam Pilgrim uh, riding this monster 36-inch wheel bike, uh, and also a real cool berm building hack. All that, plus we're announcing two competition winners of the POC Prize and that massive works uh, tool set as well. Whoa. All coming up on this week's Dirt Shed Show. Right, so Red Bull Rampage is happening this weekend, as we speak, actually, probably. Uh, so, Doddy, it's not your average mountain biking, but what about the bikes? They can't be average bikes, surely? Da I don't know how you even begin to set up a bike for this. So you're going to get some of the race, well, riders, racers, uh, entering on downhill bikes. Some will be set up with twin crowns. Some will have, like, Zebs and 38s, so they can do bar spins and stuff. Yeah. Some will even be riding, like, enduro-style bikes, which is something a bit Crazy, lighter. Crazy, I guess they'll have everything set up super hard for those big impacts. Yeah. Seminet's got two bikes, he's got one with a triple crown and the single crown, so will we see tail whips and stuff from him? I guess we will. Oh, yeah, definitely. Gonna definitely. start riding his first rampage, also on a single crown. Check out this bike, this YT from Ethan Nelson. So like, it's almost like the World Championships of free riding. Yeah, you get true. all the cool bikes coming out. Uh, Tyler McCall has got this GT, which has got Marzocchi fork on it, painted up to look like an old monster T. Now that. That is seriously cool. I mean. That is kind of my style of retro. I like that. And I guess we, we probably would have seen those monster tees back in the day at yeah. Rampage in the early days. But yeah, looking forward to see what goes down in the desert. After the roaring success last year of the Global Bike Festival, we are getting ready and revved up for 2023. So you can set yourself up for pre-registration for all the news, get signed up so you know when the tickets are coming out and you won't miss out on next year's festival. Right, let's announce some competition winners. Okay, so first up we've got the POC competition winners. So there's two helmets given away, three prizes here. Uh, Tectile Race Mips NFC goes to Daniel Lefevre. So first place, congratulations. And we've got two runner-ups that are going to win a Tectile each. Uh, David Hines and Joe Russell, congratulations. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, and thank you everyone for the support on this whole series. It's been incredible. People telling me what not to do, what to do, what to install and not install. Thank you so much for all that information in the comments down below. But the 10 runner-ups to the Works Hydra shot are these beautiful people up here on the door. Congratulations to all of you and thank you very much for entering and giving me the support to do this van. Now, the winner to all of these beautiful products and the Hydra shot goes to, drum roll please, Oliver Goodhead, congratulations, mate. Look out in your emails because you have got all of these beautiful tools to go and do your Oliver builds. But send me some pictures, tag me, whatever. Thank you very much and thank you to everyone that entered. Right, back to the studio. Time for some of this week's news. Doddy, we've got you in the set, so tell us about some cool new bike stuff. Okay, well, the main one you need to know about is the Intense Tracer 29. So they've recently released one in uh, mixed wheel size, like the mullet sort of style setup. This one is 29, front and rear. It's available in three sizes, medium, large, and extra large. Uh, this is it on your screen. 170 mil travel. This thing is an enduro racing bruiser, and I think it's really good for Intense to have a full-on race bike back again. Uh, it's running the JS Tune suspension platform, which is the latest incarnation of the VPP. So Peyton's obviously lapsed over time and he developed VPP alongside Santa Cruz for many years to get it where it is. So it's now his iteration of it, arguably the best yet. In-frame storage, got titanium hardware on there. Again, more shots on screen. There's, there's loads of these things. Beautiful looking bike. Head angle is 64 and a half degrees, while well, 64.4 in the high setting. You've got two settings. Seat angle 77.7, .7, and you've got reach between 4 455 and 505 millimeters. So the big one is a properly big bike. Starting at 455 is quite big. Yeah. Guess yeah, so. well, I guess it's a medium. So in the mixed wheel size, they'll do uh, smaller okay. sizes to cater for different size riders. I get you. Yeah. And then you've got three models, a Pro Expert, um, well, it's two versions of that. So you've got pricing from 6,499 in euros up to five, sorry, from 5,499 up to 6,499. Huh, complete bike. 
Uh, right, some sad news from British riding scene is that Revolution Bike Park is set to close actually on the 1st of January, I believe. Yeah. It's, just, yeah. it's been one of the places we've been loads over the years. One of the most incredible bike parks in the UK, if not the, the best one, with like the biggest jumps, the Vision Line, that 50 to 1 line. Unfortunately, they've got Japanese larch disease, I think it's called, and the yeah. trees are going to have to completely fell the forest, and that means closing the bike park for what they're saying is... Maybe uh, indefinitely, but at least we're talking in terms of years and not months. So, really sad news from the British riding scene. It is. I've got high hopes that it may make a comeback, though, because we have seen this so. before with some trail centres with that disease. Yeah. So, fingers crossed. Send our love to the Revolution Bike Park crew. Love those guys. Anyway, uh, back to some more positive news. Muck Off have released... Uh, these, what do you call them? They're bigger packaged uh, oils, so you don't have to, so you basically refills for your smaller oils. Yeah, which is brilliant because you only get them in like the little, I don't know, 50 mil bottle, whatever it is, and I think these fill them up six times. Exactly each, so that. you can have your wet lube, dry lube, or your C3 ceramic versions of those. So this is part of Muckoff's Project Green Treatment. So mm. obviously less packaging, but also saves you uh, 45% in cost saving as well. Yeah, it's, it's got to be a good thing, isn't it? Exactly that. This week's sickest thing has to be this insane bit of downhill riding from Antoine Buffart and Vinny T. I spotted it over on the reverse Instagram page and oh my god, they are absolutely bombing it in this, like Mac 10. Seriously, how does anyone ride this fast? Like so out of control, but also so in control, aren't they? That's my sickest thing this week, time to go back to the shed. Right, got some good hacks and bodges. I think we've got sort of an equal mix of hacks and bodges this week. Definitely. Uh, first one comes from Robert in Conway, South Carolina, on his Polygon Hardtail. We've seen this a few times where people want to stick a dropper post in with internal routing and it doesn't have the access in their uh, seat tube. Get a drill out. Get a drill out. But also, the problem <laughs> here was the on this frame, it's got like a riv nut bolt for the water bottle mount. Yeah, that's going to get in the way of your dropper. So it's got a really long dropper post. So we had to drill that riv nut out and then obviously got a big hole. Uh, so we filled that and painted it and then drilled the hole at the bottom. That's decent. He says, that's uh, that's Rob, a good bit of work. Yeah, Robert says it uh, looks okay from the 10 foot test. Yeah. It's like, sure, let's <laughs> Good from it. afar. Yeah, far from good. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, a fair play, and you're, you're gutsy enough to drill your own frame. Yeah. And I've done it before, and Have it's been fine, yeah, but we obviously the official line is don't do it. <laughs> you, you avoid your warranty, and your bike might break, but it's fine. Uh, next one from uh, Andre, who's got a Yeti Arc uh, in Budapest, Hungary. So, this is, we've seen this a few times, people using air tags That's in, right, in yeah. their bikes, and muck off, make this product that goes inside the inside the tyre, mounts to the rim. So he's actually used two of these and got an air tag and glued them together and stuck them somewhere safe. Uh, what's inside the head tube, I think? Yeah, I think the head tube what's junction. Do? Yeah, I guess because the frame's uh, it's got quite a giant, large junction on the inside with the way it's made. Yeah, well, I've said this before. I, it was great. I, you, you know, you really like to know where your bike is if it's stolen, but how do you go about getting it? And that's the problem. Right? Yeah, I mean, that, these things are great. They obviously rely on other phones to pick, pick up the system. Yeah. Uh, and it won't detect if it's moving or such, but it's a great additional thing to know where your bike is. Security hack. Should it go wonders? Sure. Yeah. I think we're now moving into the bodge territory here, Doddy. I think it's a good one. Pretty sweet bod here from Andre, Ooh. who had, he says this is a crazy bike build because my main bike broke and needed something to get out on the trail on. Uh, obviously, didn't have disc brake mounts, so he's kind of used one of those rear mudguard poles, probably drilled it out, I would have thought, to get that bolt through. And yeah. then, couple of Jubilee clips. Do you know what? I, it's terrifying, but I love it. That it is brilliant. Works. I guess. Yeah, I, I, it looks like it works. I mean, you know, Jubilee clips are pretty strong. I've um, I've used them to mount some obscure stuff to bikes over the years. Yeah, me too, actually. Yeah. And check out the other pictures. The, guy, the fork on, I don't know what it is, but he's uh, kind it's of scribbled. It's a fox fork. It is fox, yeah. It says, yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Looks like you've got some um, <laughs> aftermarket, bat, you know, sort of bit of uh, fabric on the fork to stop the oil from dripping off the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> But there you go, you ride him, which is the main thing. Yeah, getting on with it, yeah, that's important. 
I'll tell you this next one now, this, this is actually genius. So oh. I've seen one of these recently. So it's a rear axle that's broken at the end of threads there. How do you break an axle just from riding? Yeah, I mean, it could have worked a little bit loose maybe, yeah. something like that. So no, I had no, it with no. an old original maxle, the same thing, it broke at the threads. And he's put the axle all the way back through and he's used a zip tie basically to pull it together. Whoa. Which is great because obviously the frame rests on the axle itself and if you can keep it in place. Now, I've, I've done a similar thing with an inner cable. I'm guessing that's very temporary. Yeah, I guess to get you back home, literally. Jason says, yeah. well, it was secure enough they even caught some air on the jumps on the way home. <laughs> there you go, it's pretty risky. That's going to smash the hell out of the back. I've seen friends who've not tightened their rear axles properly. Yeah. Destroys the hanger, the mech, the wheel. Yeah, it's, it's a get you home, though. I think, you know, humble cable tie is definitely worth sticking a few in your riding bag. Exactly that. Right, Doddy, let's give away a race shirt to the best hackle bodge from this week. What do you reckon? I mean, it's got to be that champion bodge. The, uh, <laughs> the, the rear disc brake with the Jubilee clips from uh, Andre. Um, yeah, I think that's amazing. All right. Hi. Love it. Uh, send us details and we'll make sure a jersey is sent your way, Andre. Got to use anything. There's actually no caption contest from last week's show, but we did have some great comments from the uh, show, obviously talking about rules breaking. Yeah, first up from Hayward165, says uh, the rule I should break more often is not worrying about as much added wear to parts in bad weather. And actually, get out when it's horrendous. Pointless having a nice bike if it's locked in the garage 90% of the time. Right. I'm a big believer in that. It's just, it kind of, I look after my bikes, but at the end of the day, it's a tool for having fun. Absolutely. We'd never ride if we waited for the rain to stop anyway. It's like that. Uh, Robbie Dudson, the last three minutes was so damn funny, I spilt my coffee <laughs> laughing so much, so please do more of that. Okay. Uh, John O'Donoghue says, and that's how you exit a bike vault that had everything from flaccid bars and semis to trail dogs <laughs> that look like watercolour paintings and some savage looking bikes. Can't wait till your wanker uh, enters the next caption contest spurred on by the super nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we shall see. That was a good moment. I think we sure. need some more Jones in the dirt shed as well. So anyway, here is this week's caption contest, folks. So leave your funniest <laughs> captions down below. Right, here's some things we like this week. Starting off with something I really didn't like, but I think it's probably <laughs> worth looking at. This is uh, shared by Rick Coco. Check this out, this is Hong Kong skyscraper on a bike. Oh. It's ridiculous. I, I struggled watching this. I don't like it when people do this weird stuff on skyscrapers. The POV of him going up to the end. And on jumping. His... Oh, oh, it's mad, isn't it? Who is that? Is that Rick? I don't know, but this is crazy. Oh, he's Check got some it. skills, fair play, but... Yeah. End game. Uh, this I did like. This is from Dirt Tech Trails. This is uh, Queenstown, I think. Check out this sort of, uh, it must be a car wheel on the end of the machine, just for rolling in, getting the uh, berm compact. Yeah, they reckon that's it works. Well cool. So it's like it works way better than the vibrating plate. So, yeah. Yeah, I guess it's applying the right amount of force the whole time and getting a good angle. If you see the that's after picture, the berm looks so good. Mega as well. sculpted. Uh, all right then, Sam Pilgrim on a 36. Although it's not quite a 36, it's got a 29 on the rear wheel. No brakes. No brakes. Well, it's pedal back brake, doesn't Is it? work. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah those things are crazy. In a previous video, we bent the forks on it as a 36. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... The shot of him kind of <laughs> drifting this thing around the corner. Yeah. It's proper Sam and Pilgrim. I've been riding on a 36 and they're really hard to go around corners on. It must it's... feel good on the bumps. Uh, yeah, you don't feel them too much, but it doesn't want to turn. Yeah. And then when you lean over, it's like it only wants to turn. It's really hard to get out because the BB's so low. Whoa. So, um, bizarre bike. Uh, and, and this one, I'm not really sure what this is doing here, if I'm honest. I think, I think Martin Ashton's been, He's been in pasting in his favourite things again. I mean... Shibby time is back. I mean, it's, it's, it is mad, to be fair. But does it belong here? <laughs> it's, I don't know. It's like, congratulations, that's good. Weird. I, I can only think of the guy I see riding through traffic in a full face helmet and just think sooner or later there's a door opening on him or it's, gun under a bus. Or... This thing, you, you never see these on the trails in the UK, but it, at Bensonville, I did. Really? Yeah. I it's mean, the thing. I reckon that is flipping hard to do. And it's, imagine trying to just jump, any, jump something, you just held onto it, just your feet. It feels crazy. I guess you could jump off. I don't know. I don't want to try it, to be honest. There you go. I'd kind of curiosity killed the cat. I would, I would like to try one just to understand it and then. Maybe behind closed doors. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Coming up on the channel this week on Sunday, I bought some mountain bike tyres for less than 10 quid, 10 English pounds. Ooh. Took them for a ride to compare them to my normal tyres to see if you could save some money and buy cheap tyres. They stay on your rims? They stayed on my rims. They stayed a bit wonky on the rims because their carcass is a bit funny. It's a bit deformed. 
Yeah, not really somewhere I'd, I'd try and save the money. But there you go. Uh, we've also got a hardtail hacks, which is, I think, you know, everyone's talking about hardtails again at the moment. It's that time of year. Uh, always good, like, tips and upgrades and stuff. Uh, I think it's essential viewing, to be honest. He's like that. Right, let's get into the bike vault to see Ooh. what we've got this week. And we'll kick it off with Brad and his maiden mountain on his Orbea Occam. H20 LT, so the long travel Occam. It's got a piggyback Fox shock on it, I didn't realize that. But H is the, they call it hydro form there. It's an aluminium that looks like carbon. Yeah, that's a damn nice looking bike, isn't it? This is local to us, Forest of Dean, Verdurous no Trail. No way, yeah, solar ride as well. Uh, you were saying, nice or super nice? It's nice. It is nice. It's nice. It's nice. Oh my God, look at this bad boy. So this one's from Kyle in Alberta, so Calgary, um, and his WA1 Arrival. Man, I'd, you don't see many of those things. I was gonna say, I don't know what yeah, that is. We are one, so they make wheels as well. Yeah. Oh, that's a super nice all day long. Carbon. That is awesome looking. Does it remind me of those eminents a little bit? Or maybe yeah, I know what you mean. Kind of angles on it. Yeah, they're quite angular, which I think is quite a change from other stuff at the moment. It's all quite swoopy. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. In Calgary, that is. Right, this is Johnny and his Diamondback Octane 24 in Corona, mm. California. He's, uh, oh, it's actually Jacob's bike. who's nine years old. Awesome. Hard tails for life. Is that a RockShox Sid we see in there, Doddy? Oh, I'm not sure it is, but it looks like one, so that's fine. That that's super, super nice. Definitely for super nice. Bike bike ring about. Awesome stuff. No, that was another one, sorry. Uh, no way. This is Mary's bike. Well, I got you that. That's, that's even better. Nice. <laughs> Five-year-old Mary on a Diamondback Test 20-inch. All right, next up, a Nupu Scout. Speaking of hardtails, this one's from yeah. Kenny in his garage. That is a Blake's colour bike as well. It He's is. got one of them. I think Blake's responsible for the yellow wave that's going Look across country. SRAM access on there as well. Wow. Katana 170 ball with Fidlock 800 uh, ball, even. There you go. Nice. 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 Okay, uh, next up, Ewan in Scotland. Uh, and the bike is a Clash hardtail, so a Commissile. That's cool. I love the sort of misty shot as well. Yeah, nice. 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 Oh, what have you got here? Today. Sean Gorilla Gravity Smash. That's a cool bike. Bridal Veil Base in San Juan, Colorado. Check so it out. When you buy one of those bikes, you can change the travel of that bike just by modifying stuff on it. I've seen that, you and Bradley. You kind of swap, is it the rear it's ends? Pretty much the or? seat stays, I think it is, yeah. And you can have a different shock and the same bike can be like, you know, a seven inch travel or a you know, a 130 type bike. So this is Sean's bike. Yeah. Uh, solo biking up the Wasatch Trail loop outside of Telluride, Colorado. Look at the bottles, two bottles and, I don't know what that is. Tube, I think, you. maybe. Good setup. Oh, I'm gonna give that super nice. Yeah. That is like a good day out. I agree. Oh, next up is uh, Paul just outside Winchester, local single track on his Santa Cruz 2022 Tool Boy 4 uh, with magic shine lights on it. It's that time of year. It is, I love it? a night ride. Have you been out yet this year? I haven't, no, no, I'm desperate to. Uh, going out tonight, actually. Yeah. yeah. This is Paul's fourth Santa Cruz since 98, which is the original Heckler, 98, whoa. Camellia, 99, and Tallboy, original, I don't know, 2012. Oh, that's a super nice one. I like the night ride stuff. Good time of year. Oh, what is that? Oh, transitions. Uh, so who's this from? Uh, from Ruben in Bike Park, Wales. Check it nice. out. Nice. Yeah, what's he said? Still a beast, uh, love everyday custom raw build, chemically stripped and vapor blasted for a perfect raw finish. I was just say, it doesn't look like, well, it looks like a transition because <coughs> it is one, but the colors don't. Yeah. Custom painted the fork. Nice. That's pretty cool, isn't it? I like that. Yeah. Uh, give it a super nice. I'm yeah. Give it a super nice. I know people they get the nitro mores out and strip their aluminium bikes back. A lot of work. Yeah. Ooh, look at this bad boy. So, 2020 Evil Calling uh, from Paul in uh, Alberta, Canada. Is that a bear spray? What is that? It might be. In the be, ball cage, it looks like it's something. It could well be. It's big. Yeah. The bear spray's that big? You don't have to deal with bears in that uh, I've no yeah. idea. Yeah, it might be right. Is mm. it a bear spray? <laughs> Tell us if you're watching <laughs> uh, down there. Uh, that's got to be super nice, because the picture is awesome as well. It that is. is. What is it, Jasper in Alberta. Very nice. As always, send your bikes in using the uploader. We'll check them out. Hopefully, you'll get a super nice. That's it for this week's Dirt Shed Show. Thanks for joining me, Doddy. And definitely check out Red Bull Rampage happening as we speak. Uh, and check out some of those custom bikes you've seen. See you later. See ya.